Yo what is up guys, welcome to a new video. Today I'm gonna continue with the walkthrough of Kuli and today I'm gonna show you the mastering. I asked you in the previous tutorial if you wanted the mastering and I also asked you in the community side of YouTube. It is not that different as the mastering in Superman for example, but well, as you want it, here you have it. And with that being said, let's start with it. Okay, so here we have the track, all right? These are some automations I'm gonna explain. And well, uh, first of all, I recommend you the, to export the track in Wave because it's not gonna lose um, quality. And so people ask me how to export well in Wave, so here you have the settings I have, uh, just go on Google and search for the best uh, settings. Some people have this on 24 bit, uh, I like to put it on 32 because in theory it will have more quality, I don't really know. Uh, the size it doesn't really change, as you can see, but well, uh, it doesn't matter. And the rest, well, as you can see here. So when I'm mastering, the first thing I try to do is to check for a reference track. In this case, I choose one, Old James Soldier. I'm not gonna play because of copyright. And after that, I start with the build-up. This thing, you can do it on, on the mix down, but I prefer to do it here because otherwise, if you have a lot of things, probably it's gonna crash because there are a lot of uh, effects, you have a lot of plugins. And well, I prefer to do it just here so I don't have any crash and I can hear really well what it's doing. And these plugins are always the same and is uh, Endless Mile Delay, Endless Mile Reverb, and EQ, S1, and this one is uh, just a volume automation. Why I have two Endless Mile and not just one? Because I want one for the delay and another one for the reverb. I think it's the fifth preset of Endless Mile that has both things, but it's so aggressive, so I prefer to have two. And well, it, they are not doing that much. As you can see, it goes to 25%, it's not that much. And why I have two? Because with the delay, this one, what I'm trying to do is make the track sound fuller, because I'm cloning the sound, basically. You're repeating exactly the same sound. And then with the reverb, I'm trying to make it sound a bit uh, bigger and more in the background, you know, a bit wetter. So when the drop comes, you feel the drop a bit drier and more in your face, so it has a bit more energy. If we don't have the plugin to sound like this, but with the plugin it sounds like this. Okay, a bit wetter and more in the, in the back. After that, what I like to use is uh, an EQ to filter the sound. Um, it's true that Endless Smile filters a bit the lows, but as I'm not doing that much with this plugin, just 25%, I prefer to use an EQ. And I use Fab Filter because I realized that if you use Parametric EQ2, what happens is that when you enable, for example, um, this plugin just being enabled here in the build-up, okay, this is the the automation to enable it. What's gonna happen with parametric EQ is gonna cre create a click. I realized that with Fab Filter it doesn't happen, so I prefer to use it to use this one. And with this one, what I'm doing in is cut the lows and reduce a bit of the highs. If we go here, as you can see, I'm cutting all the lows and I'm reducing a bit the highs. With the highs, what I'm doing is just reduce the Q. So I'm doing like a high shelf. And the reason of doing this is because this way, uh, if you cut the lows on the build-up, when you come to the drop and you have all the lows, as you didn't have them before, you're gonna feel them more and it's gonna give more power to, to the drop. And uh, about the highs is more or less the same. Here, you're gonna have a lot of highs because of the uplifters and pitching up the snares and all these things. If you have a lot of highs here, in my opinion, when you come to the drop, even if you have a lot of impacts and downlifters and all these things, you're gonna have less highs. So it's gonna feel like it has less energy because in my opinion, the highs give a lot of energy to the track. So if you just reduce a bit here, you know, as you can see, it's not reducing a lot. Later, if the drop uh, has a lot of impacts and all these things, you're gonna feel them more and it's gonna give a bit more power. So well, without this uh, filter, it sounds like this. And with the filter. Then I like to use uh, the S1 and this one what I'm doing is just make it a bit more narrow. I'm not making completely mono, okay, but as you can see it just uh, it, it is on 0.8. So what I'm doing is make the track a bit more narrow on the build-up, so then when the drop comes, again, I bring it back and it seems the, the drop is wider. And finally, I'm using uh, an, a plugin to control the volume. In this case, I use it this one because in FL Studio 12, the fruity balance is in 32-bit. And if you use 32-bit plugins on FL Studio 16, it's gonna open another program that is called EL Bridge and it's gonna use more CPU. So I decided to use this one, the download this one that is in 64 bit, but in FS Studio 20, that uh, Fruity Balance is already on 64 bit, I use this one. So before the drop, um, I go until 2.5 dB uh, in reduction, then on the pre drop section, I put it on 130, and then on the drop, I bring it back to zero, and um, this is the same thing. I'm reducing the volume before the drop, so then when the drop comes, it seems it's louder. So without this plugin, it sounds like this. And with the plugin, it sounds like this. 
And in this track, um, in this part where the where the chords of the breakdown come, I decided to add some some automations too. Okay, so for example, just before those uh, super saws come, I reduce a bit the width with S1, and I reduce also a bit the volume, so it comes a bit stronger. So without it, and with this. And also, as you can see here, I had to use an, uh, an EQ that is this one and this one. So what I did in this part is it was a bit, um, I don't know, I didn't feel them that brighter and that good. So with this first EQ, what I did is just a reduction here because it sounded a bit harsh. And then I, I realized that I had to reduce a bit more. So I reduced it here and I also increased a bit the height. So just make it, uh, you know, sound a bit better, a bit cleaner and a bit brighter with this increasing here. And after that, I start with the real mastering. To this, I come to the drop and well, uh, as you can see here, I have the new hand sent and and I had to link it to another channel because I, I wanted more more effects. So you just go here, right click, root to this track only, and you have it on another channel. And here on the second channel, I have the master check. This plugin is so good because what it's doing is that if you click here, all the plugins that are between the send and the master check are going to be disabled. And if you do it like this, it's are going to be enabled. When you open the, the plugin, it is like this. So if you click those three and you click here, what's going to happen is that it's going to keep the same volume even if the plugins are enabled or disabled. It is so good to check if the sound is really doing what it, what you want or if you are just tricking your ears because it's louder and you, you think it's better. So well, I start always with an EQ. In this case, I just um, use this one for resonance. Don't try to go that low on this one for example this one is pretty heavy you know minus six is a lot and sometimes in this part i also try to eq maybe to make it a bit brighter or you know less muddy but don't go too low or too high with this just maybe between minus minus 0 0.5 or one db and a half okay not, not that much after that i have an equalizer that is um with a match eq i'm going to show you how to do this that's why i have a uh, reference track so what i do is first on the master i load an equalizer where i have a cut I'm going to explain later why I have this cut here and then another equalizer. So with this one, what we want to do is go here to the match section. I'm going to just take it, the volume uh, down and you're going to click on target audio. Okay, so now you press play. What this is going to do, this plugin is uh, take the average uh, frequencies of, of, the, of the track, of what is sounding. Okay, so I normally do it for the first part of the drop. So we stop it and we have this wave and then I go to the reference track and we go to the reference audio and do the same, capture and play. Okay, so it's gonna do the same, it's gonna take, uh, take the average frequencies and it doesn't matter if it's louder because the equalizer is gonna match the volumes when it's gonna apply the match EQ, so don't care about that. Now if we click here, it's gonna apply an EQ. I normally uh, have it first on 30% of amount so I really can see what it's doing and on a smoothing I recommend you 60-70 because something like this is not gonna sound good so better if it's smoother but you know 100 is not also good so I put it on 70 and from here I start um, listening what what sounds good or what sounds bad and this first high cut uh, in my opinion is so needed because the problem is that the reference track is an mp3 mp3 uh, cuts uh, there's a high cut on 16 kilohertz so if we don't have this high cut and if we um, you know capture the sound as you can see, it has a high cut here, and your track doesn't have this because you export it in, in Wave. If we capture a track, as you can see, it doesn't have this high cut. So if you match now, it's going to reduce a lot, and you don't want that. So for this track, I have this match EQ, so as you can see, it's not a lot, it's just 10%. And here, I use it the normal analog EQ to make it um, more or less flat on this part, so it's not reducing because of the MP3 thing I, I told you. After that, I have this EQ and this EQ they are for the breakdown, I explained it before. Then I have Ozone 8, and this one I use it also um, with reference tracks. You go here on reference, I don't know why I don't have any. You click on add reference and you add a new track. And then when you click on master assistant, uh, you click here on reference, you're gonna have here your track and you click on next. So you play your track. And what this is gonna do is to create an, equal, an EQ, a dynamic EQ and a maximizer um, to match the loudness and the EQ of the reference track. What I do is uh, do it and then I tweak it a bit. So for example, here I just, uh, probably it has also a reduction on the highs because of the MP3 thing I told you. And well, I just reduced a bit the lows on 0.5. About dynamic EQ, you know, it creates some things. So when you play the track, 
Um, as you can see, it is reducing a bit in some parts. Um, and well, I check them, you know, and if it's needed, I put the threshold a bit up so it's not applying that much of this reduction. And I take out the maximizer because I like to use other plugins for limiting. I'm going to explain later. And I also use an imager, okay? To use the imager, what you do is on the master, I load another imager in the same spots, okay? And then what I do is start soloing the things. So for example, I solo the bass and I put uh, the reference track and I put mine and I compare, okay? Then I go for the mids and I compare, okay? Um, I try to match the volumes so they sound more or less in the same volume and I, I don't trick my ears thinking that one is wider or better because of the volume. So at the end, as you can see, I didn't do that much, just 15, 20 and 10% on, on width on these bands. So it's a bit wider. And before the limiting, I like to use another EQ, just the final one, where I normally cut the lows and the highs. You don't really need uh, the frequencies that are from 30 hertz to below, okay? So it's better to cut them, not do a high cut, uh, a low cut like this, because it's so aggressive and probably gonna have um, face problems and it's gonna sound weird, the lows and all these things. So 20, 4 dB, 30 dB is enough. As you're cutting these frequencies, the frequencies are not gonna hit the, the limiter. So you're gonna be able to limit a bit more the, the track and have a better, better commercial level. Also do the same with the really highs, you know, it's on basically on 20 kilohertz. And here, uh, for example, I reduce a bit here, as you can see, not, not a lot, just 0 0.7 and increase it a bit here to make it a bit brighter and some resonance I also found later. And after that, we come to the, the limiting part and I use two limiters. Why? Because with the Fab Filter Pro L, what I like to do is to cut the peaks. As you can see, I'm not reducing a lot, maybe around 2 dB is more or less, okay, just to cut the, the, the top uh, peaks of the of the track and I put it on transparent so it doesn't affect really the how the sound is it's, it's not adding color to it and after that I use the invisible limiter to compress the track and to do this what I do is uh, I load the invisible limiter I click here on unity gain monitoring and what it's gonna do is that even if you put it to the max it's gonna keep the level the, the same the same volume okay what I do is I don't look at this because you gonna sometimes you can treat yourself because if you know that somewhere here it sounds good maybe if you see that you are here you're thinking that it's distorting and maybe it's not so I prefer to not look at it so what I do is just play the track okay now it's muted for the copyright so I play the track and I start increasing and I say okay here is distorting okay so without looking at it all the time I start reducing the volume and see here it's not distorting so for example let's say it's here and you say okay here is not distorting so what I do now as it is keeping the same volume you can disable and enable the plugin and you're gonna compare really easy if it's really distorting or not so if we compare without the limiter it sounds like this and with the limiter it sounds like this so as we can see it's not distorting, so it's good. In this case, I had it uh, here on 325. Um, also put the oversampling on 16, so it has a better quality. And after that, you know, just take out the Unity game monitoring and go here. Uh, you can use other plugins, I use this one. It's a dynamic range uh, meter, and what it's gonna do, it's gonna tell you the dynamic range of the track. So if we play the track, as you can see, it goes to around 3.7, 3.8, more or less. Uh, commercial level in EDM, if you go to 4, it's okay. If you have less value, it's because it's more compressed. If you are around 4, it's okay, okay? You don't really need to go to 2 or 2.5 two that I've seen tracks that are there, and but you don't really need it. If, for example, if you are, let's say, uh, you don't really trust in yourself because maybe it's distorting and you cannot really hear it. Let's say you are here and it's not distorting and you have it on a value, for example, of 3. Just decrease a bit. Okay, I have it on 3.3 .3 or even more, I have it on 3.7, something like this. It's gonna have a commercial level too. So you make sure it's not distorting and you have a, a clean sound. And sometimes the last thing I do is use the tonal balance control. Um, I show you this plugin in another tutorial. What uh, it does is it tells you the, the balance between all the bands. So for example here, uh, just go and create a custom target from audio file. I choose it on uh, the track I has as reference, okay, Soldier. So it creates these bands and it means the track is on these bands. I like to also play the original track because this also takes the breakdown. So on the drop, for example, the bass is like here, the mids are like here, and mid highs and highs are basically on top. So if we play our track, just wait a little bit and we can see more or less it's at the same. Maybe we have 
more bass, you know, maybe we could, yeah, we should reduce a bit the bass and increase a bit the mids, but it's pretty good, you know, we are in the in the level. So, well, guys, this is it. Uh, this is how I master my tracks. I think it's not really complex, but it takes a bit of time because there are a lot of things you have to do. As you can see, it's not complex, okay? I don't like to use uh, presets of, for example, Ozone because I prefer to do things myself and use the plugins I like. So I hope you learn a lot with this entire walkthrough of my track Cooley. Uh, remember that you have it here on YouTube, you have it on Spotify and SoundCloud and everywhere. So go there and stream it if you like it. And thanks for watching these videos, guys. Uh, leave a like if you, it helped you. Subscribe so you didn't miss any tutorial. Recommend you, me all the tutorials in the, in the comment section. And guys, see you in the next video.